Hi, this is Joe Maciars from A-Tutoring Enterprises. Today I want to talk about how to graph square root equations. Specifically, I want to talk about the parameters A, H, and K. I want to ask, what is it that they do? All right, let's go over to a grapher and get up a 2D graph for ourselves. Let me put this in to your screen. There we go. All right. So we're going to preset some of the parameters right now. We're going to set A equal to 1. We're going to set H equal to 0. And we're going to set K equal to 0. And now let's put in the star of our little video here. Y equals A times the square root. Now we can get at that square root by going to this little summation uh, sign here. It's a summation of x squared. That's not really what it implies. It's just a random symbol to indicate the equation palette. Uh, our square root of x ends up right here, uh, or shows up right here. We'll just click that and it shows up over in our equation. We're now going to type in x minus h and um, get out of that. Remember, to get out of a square root, uh, you just hit your right arrow when you're at the end of it, and that'll get you out. There may be a couple of other ways to do it as well. And then simply plus K, or little k. All right, so there is our parabola. Let me zoom out a little bit. And I want to move it over a little bit. Actually about there. And we're going to change its color just to give you something a little more colorful to look at. So there it is, and um, in the last video I challenged you to figure out what happens with A, uh, when we change A, and what happens when we change H, and what happens when we change K. Uh, we're going to go look at changing A right now. So do you recall what you uh, thought? Uh, do you have a guess? You know, we're going to find out shortly here. Let me go ahead and move that down. Let's pick our settings. We're going to go from negative 4 to 4. And let's go by 81 steps. Okay. All right. So we're ready to play this. Um, so here's the grand moment where uh, you uh, see if you're right. Do you remember what you thought? Let's find out. Okay. So there's actually a couple of things that you could say that this is doing. For example, one of the things that I could say is happening is I can say that, especially right now where it's coming down, is that each Y value might be, be, be cutting by a certain percentage. For example, I might want to cut this Y value by 2, which will put it you know, roughly about here. This Y value might end up about here. This Y value would end up about here if I cut everything by 2. But I can also achieve the same thing by stretching the x-axis. For example, I could take this point and move it to here. I could take this point and move it to here. And I can take this point and move it all, all the way over here. Both of those are achieved by letting this move on a little bit. Now, I can actually show that whether this is a stretch or uh, in the x-direction, compression in the y-direction, or a stretch in the y-direction, compression in the x-direction, uh, that really those things are equivalent. And I'm not going to show that. I'm not going to prove that in this video. I've got another video in mind later where I'm going to actually indicate that to you. I think it's, it's kind of a cool idea, and it's worth showing a lot of, a lot of books and textbooks. Uh, and teachers don't talk about this, but it's, it's kind of a neat idea that uh, uh, the stretching in one direction is the same as the compression in another. Now, that's not generally true. Uh, so there's a, there's a feature of symmetry associated with parabolas that allows that to be true, and, and a few other equations, but it's not true in other kinds of equations. For example, y equals the sine of x. That family of curves, uh, stretches in the x and the y direction, are different. All right. So let's continue our play here. And by the way, if you didn't understand what I was talking about here, don't worry about it. Uh, when we get to the next video that talks about that kind of thing, I'll point it out, and I'll... Uh, refer back to this video. Now notice that in this case where a is negative, we've actually flipped the uh, square root function over the x-axis. So again, a has sort of two uh, 
properties associated with it, the stretching or compressing in the x and or y direction, and it, the value, the absolute value of it, or sorry, the sign of it actually tells you whether it is uh, in the uh, above the x-axis or below the x-axis. So this is all that A does. Nothing, nothing fancier than this. Okay, so let's go ahead and pause that. And what we're going to do, I guess I should have just stopped that, is we're now going to go look at what happens to H when we, uh, or the graph when we play with H. So again, what do you think is going to happen? This one should be really obvious because it's, it's a pretty easy, straightforward thing. Let's do again negative 4 to 4. Uh, let's cut the values down to 41. All right, go by point twos each step, and let's play it. So there it is, it's going negative, and uh, it's moving to the left. When h becomes 0, it goes back to the origin, and when h becomes positive, it moves to the right. Now keep in mind, again, this is the same thing that we saw with the parabola, that if I actually put in a positive value, let's say, uh, for example, I put in positive 2, there we go, this will look like x minus 2. So if you're looking at this, it looks like it's moving to the left because of the negative 2. But the h itself is a positive 2 if this says x minus 2. All right. Likewise, if h is negative 2, there we go, this will be x minus a negative 2. In other words, it'll look like x plus 2, which will make it look like it should be shifting to the right. But it's not. It's shifting to the left because h itself is a negative 2. So that's something to be aware of. Other than that, it's exactly what I hope you thought was going to happen. It's just moving left and right. That's what H controls. Well, even if you haven't seen the other videos, you probably have a pretty good idea. Let's again pause this, or stop this. And uh, you'll have a pretty good idea of what K does. Let's go ahead and see real quick. We're going to animate that parameter. Again, our settings seem to always change on us. We'll go negative 4 to 4 again. We'll go by point 2s. That all looks good. Well, if you said move up and down, there it is. It indeed is moving up and down. Now, unlike the, the H, because there's a, a plus sign here, when K is positive, and we're going to wait a little bit till it comes up and be, is positive, uh, when k is positive, it actually moves in that direction. So there, let's just pause it somewhere here. There's 2.2. When k is 2.2, we'll see plus 2.2, and it will have actually moved it up 2.2 units. And not just this one single point, but all the points. Uh, on the other hand, if I let k be negative, let's wait a little bit. That's pretty good. Uh, when k is negative 1.4, the equation would look like it would have a minus 1.4 here, and that would make it look like it went down. So that's it. The a is about stretching uh, in the either x or y direction, and its sign tells us whether it's above the x-axis or below the uh, x-axis. And uh, the uh, h is the moving left and right, and the k is moving up and down. Uh, I do want to show you something else um, that is a little unique. There's one thing that I haven't been able to do with what I'm showing here, and that thing that I haven't been able to do is to move or rotate about the y-axis. So let me go ahead and stop this and show you how I can do that. Uh, now that actually requires a, a little bit something different, and that something different is a minus sign involved in the inside of this. Now. This is why I, I actually don't normally work with this equation when I want to talk about things. I usually work with a slightly different equation. And what I'll do is I'll call this y over b. Um, yeah, let's go with y over b. There's a couple of ways we can write this, but let's go with this. Equals, and then we're going to have the square root... There it is, of x over a, and then we're going to have, actually I want the 
think I want the H up on top. I can't remember, but we'll do that. Yeah. Well, I'm kind of doing it differently, so no. Let's do it. There's a couple ways we can think about it. And they do different things depending upon the, the form that you put it in. So let me keep it like this. And it's having a little heart attack there because I didn't define B. Let's define B to be 1. Okay. And let's turn the old equation off. We'll make this uh, red just to be something different. All right. And... Uh, yeah, that's basically it. So now, if I go ahead and animate A, now A is now associated with the inside and with X, we're going to see a little bit different behavior. Let me make sure. Interesting, that stayed like that. Let's uh, uh, change this to 41 and see what happens. Oh, there already we've got our negative. So in this case, when the, the variable is assigned inside, that is the A is on the inside, negating it is equivalent to moving it uh, about or rotating it about the y-axis. Now you may wonder why I wrote this in kind of a strange form. The old A here is actually more related to the B. If I would take Y and divide it by A, that would be the same as the Y over the B. And I've just replaced the x with this a new the new a let's say, and so a is now more directly in charge of what's happening in the x direction, and b is more of what's happening in the y direction. Uh, so this is a way of of generating these curves as well. Uh, you're going to see when I talk about conic sections that you're going to see the same type of notation. We're not going to be talking about multiplying uh, a parameter in. We're going to be talking about dividing a parameter. And dividing is actually a, a much more intuitive way to talk about things. I'm not going to speak a whole lot about that here. I just want you to kind of get a little taste of it here. This is going to be covered under a general uh, video I'm going to do later about dilations. And it's going to generically talk about how to think about all kinds of shifts and dilations and flips about axes in a much more, um, how would I say it, a much uh, more universal way that's easier to remember. Uh, a lot of the equations that I've been showing you, although they're they're completely what the the textbooks tend to give you, uh, really aren't very good for the more general thought process. And quite frankly, I prefer the general thought process because then there's much much less to remember. So, with that being said, that's going to be it for today's video. Uh, you can think about this last new equation and what the meaning is behind A and B and where they're at and so forth and ponder that a little bit and uh, we'll catch the the information about that in another video. So let's switch over to the final screen, uh, the last screens here and uh, this was A Tutoring Enterprises and we were covering square root equations specifically the parameters A, H, and K. Um, that's my little business, my tutoring business. My name is Joe Maciars. My website is at www.tutent.com. My email is at tutent at neb.r.com. And you can reach me at 402-421-3536. I uh, do tutoring for math, physics, chemistry, engineering, and obviously some little programming things occasionally. Um, I do it uh, online on Skype, and I also do it in person in Lincoln, Nebraska. Uh, at my website, you'll find information about my hours and my cost and good stuff like that. Let's move to the next screen. And um, if you like this video, if it, you thought it helped you out a little bit, uh, please feel free to send me a, a dollar or two to my PayPal account. Uh, I'm saving up to buy a camera so I can help you guys give you more free information and uh, so if you guys help me out I'm gonna be able to help out more of you so uh, be a little generous when it comes to that if you can I'd appreciate it thank you and uh, let me scroll down to here this is gonna be a white screen where you should be seeing all kinds of little links popping up 
and uh, some of those to past videos, some of those to future videos. Also, um, you should see a little thing telling you to like if you liked my video. Um, please do so. I always enjoy uh, it when people really uh, like what I'm doing. And uh, even if you didn't like it, you know, feel free to tap it a couple of times if you like. I wouldn't mind. I won't tell. Uh, other than that, uh, thanks a lot for watching the video, and I uh, hope you have a great day.